A very good evening and I am Ms. Prashanti would like to take this opportunity to welcome you all for this Facebook live session Let's Talk Health. This is the right platform where we will have all the subject experts coming and spending their time with us talking about the different emerging advancements in the healthcare setting. So in this journey today I am glad to welcome Dr. Mallikarjuna Reddy, Senior Consultant Robotic Surgeon and one of the mentors in robotic surgeries in India. So we are glad to have you sir. So, hope all of you will uh, stay tuned together for more updates. Uh, sir, can we proceed further? Yes. Yeah, sir, sir, could yeah. Sir, sir, could you please tell us what is robotic pediatric surgery and how does it differ from a traditional surgery? No, I think a lot of us are now aware about, the, about robotic surgeries. But most of the robotic surgeries today in India are done in adults and more so for uh, urological problems and more so for urological cancers. But in the West, uh, robotic surgery is now the norm for any problems of the children in terms of any swelling of the kidney or if there is a reflux or which stays that the urine is going back into the kidney or any bladder problems or a bladder neck problems. So, the robotic surgery has been uh, integrated into the pediatric segment in the West. But in India, it is now a, a fate which is coming up because the robots are now becoming ubiquitous and then uh, the advantages of robotic surgery as what we get in adults is again we get a lot of precision in what we do in these young children because it gets magnified by 1 is to 5. So there is a huge precision when we do robotic surgery and number 2 the pain is extremely low when we do this robotic surgery in children and we can go as small as uh, 1 to 2 months of age where we can actually do these reconstructive surgeries. Majority of the pediatric urological surgeries are reconstructive surgeries where we have to reconstruct the urinary tract both at the kidney level, at the bladder level, at the bladder neck level. So all these reconstructive surgeries where we have to do it need precision because these have to stay for a long time for the ch uh, child's life. Okay. So this is where the robotic surgery comes into play where it gives us magnifications, it gives us precision so that we have a la better long term outcomes. That gives us a lot of assurance. Sir. Could you please throw some light on what conditions can be treated with pediatric robotic surgeries? Yeah. yeah. Look, all, to, to crossly uh, tell you that any surgery which we have been doing by open surgery or naproscopy can actually be shifted towards uh, robotic surgery. But then I could uh, give you a specific examples where we can do robotic surgery to improve the kidneys in children. One is in hydronephrosis or PUJ obstruction which we say okay. where the kidneys are obstructed and the tube which carries urine the ureter from the kidney to the bladder is obstructed. So we actually take out the obstructed part of the tube and put both the normal tube and the kidney together. Okay. That is one area. The second thing is in reflux where the child comes with uh, recurrent urinary tract infections. So there the urine actually instead of coming out uh, through the ureter outside some amount of urine is already pushed back into the kidneys causing infections. Now we can correct that again with robotic surgery with good precision. Other important aspects where this helps is in children who are incontinent. That means who cannot control urine. Okay. So in these children if there is a bladder neck problem where the sphincter or the control mechanism is lacking, we can create a control mechanism with that. And number two, in these children, sometimes there is something called a neurogenic bladder or children who had some spinal cord uh, problems whom they were operated. So these children have a bad bladders in terms of thick bladders uh, or bladders which produce very high pressure so as to that the urine keeps coming out without the knowledge of the child. And these bladders, we can actually decrease the pressures by various modalities. So these are the and these are a few examples where we can actually do robotic surgeries in pediatric urology, except something which is outside like hypospadias or uh, anything on the test is rest all surgeries which we could be doing uh, by open surgery can now be shifted to the minimal invasive platform of robotics. Okay, so so sir, do you consider it safer in children, sir? I think we need to realize that uh, worldwide. Uh, more than a lack of uh, pediatric uh, robotic surgeries are done every year. And the pediatric robotic surgeries have been in vogue since last 10 years. So they are absolutely safe. 
and uh, we sometimes look at the child and uh, there may be few instances at less than 1% where the child may not be fit for the robotic surgery or they will need only open surgery but in 99% of the times uh, it is an extremely safe uh, surgery and even in the robot there are a lot of safety mechanisms uh, installed into that that uh, the robot would shut down if there is in any unnatural movement yeah. uh, and it's and for uh, people's information Robotic surgery is not that some robot does that surgery. It's a robot which is docked on to the patient and the surgeon sits as a console so that we actually manipulate the robot in such a way that it does a precise surgery. So if I don't do anything, it will not do anything. Okay. So what I do is what, it, what uh, the robot will do. But the advantage with the robot, it has got a much better wrist which is better than the human wrist. Officially, the human wrist has got six degrees of motion. Whereas the robotic arm has about 7 degrees of motion, it can actually go all the way. I'll have to do, uh, turn my elbow here, instead of that the wrist itself will turn 360 degrees uh, in a robotic surgery. So it's extremely safe in children and there are umpteen number of surgeries which are being carried out every day all over the world uh, that we need to realize. Okay, that clears many of our myths sir. And also we would like to know what factors do you consider uh, when you are taking a decision of whether the child is a right candidate for the robotic surgery or not? I think I would probably put it on the other way around that I would look at child whether where he would not probably fit into robotic surgery because most of the children will fit into robotic surgery. Uh, with our experience in doing children for the last 20 years when we have done laparoscopy in children who have been just born in newborns and neonates uh, robotic surgery can always be extrapolated in every aspect of uh, every kind of child. So only in a few rare situations where probably there is an extrophy of the bladder, where the bladder is outside, uh, something like hypospadia, or if the child has got severe lung problems where we cannot put in gas into the abdomen. So those are the little very small issues or a very minimally uh, sort of, sort of uh, what do you say, uh, the minimum number of times where we probably cannot do robotic surgery in children. But majority of the times we can. When I talk of majority, we are talking of almost 19. And yes. yes. So there are, are there any follow-up treatments or appointments required after this robotic surgery? Follow-up is always required after any kind of surgery. Forget about robotic for an app for open. Okay. What previously we were doing with open surgery what we were probably doing with, dif with difficulty with laparoscopic surgery, we are able to do it at a much precise way and much faster and simpler way with robotics. Okay. So the surgery is the same. The okay. follow-ups are needed. It all depends on the kind of surgery the child gets. Okay. The follow-up may be short, the follow-up may be long, depending on the kind of disease the child has. But definitely there needs to be a follow-up to see whether that surgery is successful or not. Or does it need any further correction because nothing is 100% in life. Okay, so that means we understand the schedule remains individual. Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you so much, sir, for the informative session. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Would you like to know more about health? Stay tuned. We shall get back to you next Friday at the same time on Facebook Live from 4 p.m. onwards. Shall there be any queries while we speak? We request you to drop a message in the comment box. We shall get back to you. Thank you.